I finished my sister, the serial killer. And it's been all over <clears throat> booktube and with the prize winner, um, with it being up for the women's prize and everything. I liked the writing in the book. It was very fast. The chapter's on like a page or two. And so you get through it very quickly. And I liked that it was set in um, Lego so that um, it's not something that's the traditional stuff we get from African writers and so that was fun however the title of the book really is like the whole plot you know this the older sister having to clean up the mess of the younger sister because she's really a serial killer and I got two sisters and I wish them helpers would think that I'm gonna cover up for them like this sister did did for um her sister her younger sister I think it's a great read. I think this author is going to be awesome as she continues to um, craft her work. And I look forward to seeing what she does next. It's getting ready to storm, but I need to drop these books off at the library. So just in case you see some thunder or some wind blowing, it's just a storm. <laughs> so I want to talk about this book that I read, I will listen to on my way to work for a couple of weeks. And that is The Wisdom of Sundays by Oprah Winfrey. And it is a collection of conversations she's had with different um, spiritual leaders and uh, world changers who really just want to have a soulful conversation about life and what they've learned about God and about justice, about mercy, forgiveness, so many topics that are so relevant. And it was just a wonderful experience to have just that touch of inspiration every morning as I was headed to work every day. The next book I attempted to read, listen to was this one, and it is Believe Me, A Memoir of Love and Death and Jazz Chickens by Eddie Izzard. And my understanding, he's a comedian, entertainer, and I thought it would be kind of interesting. I mean, I'm always one for learning about new people but he came across as being very pretentious and I don't know if it's just because of his British accent that I just couldn't get into it so I didn't have that one so hopefully next audiobook will be better so I finished this it is Benediction by Kent Hara and I have uh, read a book by him some years ago I think it was his last book that he wrote before passing away Our Souls at Night and I really enjoyed that book and so I've always wanted to pick up something else by the author and so when I saw this um, audiobook in the library I was like okay let me listen to it and it is exactly what I remember about his writing being is simple it's about a small town and it's really about what a benediction is the ending of something uh, the main character uh, dad Lewis he's He's dying. He has a terminal illness. And he's reflecting on his life and the things that he's went through. There are other secondary characters that feed into um, the, his story. And so that, with it being in a small town, it really felt like something that I'm used to being from a small town. It's like everybody thinks they know your business and don't know nothing. <laughs> it's just what they think they know. <laughs> So, um, I definitely would recommend it. I want to read more by him. And so, if you read anything by him, let me know in the comments. I read three collections of poetry this month. Uh, the first one is... American Sonnets for My Past and Future Assassins by the wonderful Terrence Hayes. And a lot of people on book two have read it. Fabulous collection. The other two collections I read were um, Cotton Candy on a Rainy Day by Nikki Giovanni. Everybody that watches my channel knows that's my girl. And I also read For My People by Margaret Walker. I got those two recommendations from Reading Heavy by Kaisi Lehman. He talked about both of those um, poetry collections in that book. So I had to go check them out because I read that um, in June. <laughs> and also, I have been on my short story game again. I will talk about two of those short stories that I read. They came from the collection um, 
Children of the Night by Gloria Naylor, that Gloria Naylor edited. And so I talked about some of those um, stories in another collection, another um, video clip. Well, <clears throat> the first one I'm going to talk about is In a House of Wooden Monkeys by Shea Youngblood. I've heard of that author before, but I had never read anything by her. And it was an interesting um that this short story takes place on an island where there has been um, colonizers who have come and introduced their religion. And so a young lady has had babies that died before, and she has one that lives, so she decides to have it baptized um, by the uh, colonizer's priest. And it's an interesting short story that looks at which one is the colonizer's way of life better, or is it the native people's that's... Uh, better so it's, it's a it was a good story I definitely think I should check out Shay Youngblood and the second story I want to talk about is called Young Reverend Zelma Lee Moses by Joyce Carol Thomas I have read a short story by Joyce Carol Thomas before and um, I thought her writing was very good and uh, this short story is about a young preacher woman who think she can fly and I just let your imagination go from there but it was a very interesting uh, short story to take a look at and I will list all the other ones that I read during the month as well I hope that you're all having a great had a great reading month in the month of July and thanks for watching and have a great day